Hi, everybody. I'm Chris Primesberger, editor of eWeek. Thank you very much for joining us today for this latest segment of eWeek eSpeaks. It's a series of conversations with IT thought leaders from every corner of the business. Our interviewee today is Raj Dutt, and Raj is the CEO. And are you the co-founder or the founder of Grafana? I'm one of three co-founders, Chris. Co-founder of Grafana yep. Labs, G-R-A-F-A-N-A -A -A Labs. Welcome, Raj. Thanks, Chris. Pleasure to be here. Yeah, good to meet you too. And tell me a little bit about the company itself, the high level with the business and IT problems it solves, and then uh, a little bit about your background. Sure. Uh, well, uh, we're Grafana Labs. Uh, we're best known for the, being the company behind the Grafana Open Source Project, which is uh, one of the world's most popular visualization uh, platforms, uh, mainly focused on the observability use case. So helping companies manage their infrastructure and applications and software uh, to, uh, better, helping them uh, roster with less risk reduce MTTR um, and basically deliver a, a better user experience uh, to their customers. Um, we're also very heavily involved with the Prometheus project, which is taking off. And uh, recently we launched the Loki and Tempo open source projects and at Grafana Labs, we're really building a uh, open and composable uh, observability platform um, for the next generation of uh, internet applications. Um, and as far as my background goes, Chris, um, you know, I'm one of the co-founders and the CEO here at Grafana Labs. I've got uh, a little bit of history within the internet infrastructure space. I used to run a uh, uh, hosting cloud computing company in a previous life. And uh, on a personal note, I love aviation and uh, I love to fly, but haven't been doing a lot of that uh, over the last year, unfortunately. Talk about observability. If you're up in the sky, you can observe a lot of things, can't you? Absolutely. Including, most interestingly, the curvature of the Earth. But yeah. uh, that's, yep. That's pretty high up, though. Wow. Okay. Uh, what, actually, real quickly, uh, when can, how high up do you have to be to be able to see the curve, the curve of the curvature of the Earth? I'd say once you get about past 20, 30,000 feet, you can start seeing it. Once you're, if you ever are lucky enough to get past, 40 or 50,000 feet, you can uh, truly, uh, you know, uh, know for sure that the earth is round and, uh, and give uh, the flat earthers a hard time. But <laughs> certainly once you past 30,000 feet, it's pretty obvious. Okay. All right. Well, good. You touched on the, uh, the uh, at a high level, what observability means, but can you go maybe a little deeper about it? Uh, what, what exactly is observability? We've, we've known about this for a long time. It just, it's really starting to come to the fore, I think, a lot more in just recent in recent years, and largely due to this to this project, the open source project. But it uh, it includes, you know, monitoring of all these things, the administration of all these things. What else does it include? Well, you know, it's funny, Chris. Observability is a world is a word that has really come into prominence in the last few years, and really, um, I think it's a recognition that the complexity of software and internet applications has really risen tremendously um, over the last several years. So I think the industry really feels like a new word other than monitoring is really needed to kind of recognize that complexity. Um, and so observability is defined uh, by various people and companies in, in very different ways, I'd say. Um, there's obviously a lot of hype behind it at this point, um, but really it's just a recognition that you know, software has become really complicated, right? With the advent of things like uh, microservices and, you know, uh, virtual machines and containers and serverless and, and what have you. And essentially it's no longer just about making sure that the, the known knowns are, are okay. It's no longer about just making sure that you aren't running out of disk space or you have enough connections in your database servers. Uh, you know, monitoring has really become a data analytics problem. And, uh, you know, um, I guess that's that's the main reason why the industry as a whole has kind of, I think, felt that just a, a new word and a new term was uh, was necessary to recognize that complexity. Yeah, I, I guess the Grafana project has really coalesced all these things together. It seems like, and maybe that's what was needed was to be able to put all these uh, functionality uh, pieces together so that uh, you could put some tools um, to work. Uh, on it. And, um, you know, the whole idea of um, 
specialized tools anymore is becoming more and more a thing of the past. We're talking platforms now. Everything's in platforms with menus of functionality that you can pick. And then um, the, whole, the whole idea of no, no load and uh, no code and um, low code uh, for empl employee line of business people to be able to use these tools is becoming more and more a trend too. And eWeek has been following that for a long time and it looks like it's gonna continue. Can you give me an idea? Well, first of all, how long has Grafana been in business since the open source project? Yeah, well, the open source project was started in uh, 2014. Uh, it was released uh, basically in early 2014 uh, by our co-founder, Torkel Odegaard, um, as kind of a, a passion hobby project of his, mm -hmm. where he was really starting, scratching his own itch, um, like, like many open source projects, that that was the reason why it was created. And the company itself has been around since uh, early 2015. Okay, and can you tell me roughly how many customers you guys have, or do you know? Because because don't you have uh, do you have a freemium version of this at all or not? Well, obviously, as a as an open source company, since the very beginning, we've had you know freely available um, software that people can download and use, and right. is extremely you know functional. So that's been our strategy from the beginning. Um, you know, there's over 700,000 um, organizations that are using. Uh, the open source version of Grafana. Um, and, you know, it's got a very wide uh, and vibrant community that we're lucky enough to be at the center of mass on. And then recently, just about uh, two months ago, we actually launched a free version of our cloud platform, mm -hmm. which has become uh, quite popular since then. Um, in terms of number of customers, we've got about uh, 1,400 paying customers, um, ranging from some of the largest companies in the world that are paying us sort of millions of dollars per year to, you know, small startups who are paying us, uh, you know, a hundred, hundreds of dollars per year. So yeah. kind of pretty wide range of customers. All over, all over the map on this. That's great. I'm glad to hear that. Um, what, uh, if someone is using the freemium version and decides they want to, um, really ascend to the, uh, to the pro version or the, uh, you know, the managed version, what, other types of services can they expect to get? Is there a menu list that they can choose or is it a whole platform? Yeah, I mean, so basically, you know, we try to make really useful and valuable open source software. So the large majority of users of Grafana are perfectly content uh, to, to keep using the freely available open source version. And that's, that's part of the business model, right? We were all about monetizing a very small part of what is hopefully a very large pie. Um, as far as the users who end up becoming customers of either Grafana Enterprise or Grafana Cloud, um, they generally upgrade to the paid versions for, uh, for, for three or four key reasons. And uh, those include uh, access to integrations for kind of the commercial landscape of observability vendors. So we interoperate really well with vendors like Splunk, New Relic, Datadog, AppDynamics, Dynatrace, you know, all the observ all the commercial observability vendors that no doubt you've heard of and that your, you know, subscribers are listening to. Um, and, you know, we, we bring all that data together in a single pane of glass. Um, and we do that without requiring our customers to move their data into yet another database. So if they want to bring data together from commercial vendors in the space, that's one reason why they upgrade. Um, they also upgrade to get direct support from Grafana Labs. And as the creators and maintainers of projects like Grafana, Logi, Prometheus, Tempo, obviously we're the experts and we can really kind of help support, accelerate and de-risk um, their entire platform. And there's also features uh, around security, around availability, reporting um, that, is, uh, that is not available in the open source version. Um, and those features and integrations are really designed to appeal, for, appeal to large companies who are running at scale. Okay, and I, I imagine the use cases for this are all over the board too, right? Can you give me an example of just one use case that's that would be a exemplary of uh, of how how a company is using Grafana? Sure, yeah, the, and the use cases are really um, you know over the board, so ranging from things like um, you know uh, an emergency room system in Tokyo is using Grafana to track the uh, the waiting times of different ERs within, uh, within Tokyo. Um, you know, uh, that's kind of outside of our core observability use case. 
And then within the core observability use case, uh, a customer that we can uh, we can talk about is uh, J.P. Morgan Chase. We recently won their Hall of Innovation Award, and JPMC is using Grafana to, uh, as well as Prometheus to basically allow their developers to run faster with less risk, right? And basically understand how their applications, their infrastructure is operating, make sure that their customers can, uh, you know, uh, continue to have a great user experience, um, avoid downtime, um, you know, reduce the MTTR, the time that it takes for them to resolve issues, and just generally, you know, provide a faster, more stable, cost-efficient platform to their customers. Yeah, we've got just about a minute left, uh, Raj, so uh, we'll need to get it closed. But um, uh, what was I going to say? I had a question in mind, and it had to do with, um, what was it? Uh, uh, it'll come back to me maybe, but uh, what, what trends are you seeing in your area right now? What, are there other functionalities that, you're, that you're, um, your customers are asking you for that you're working on that you can talk about or what? Yeah, sure. Well, one big trend, Chris, that, that you kind of touched on is, you know, we're finding that almost no company is consolidating their observability strategy into a single vendor, right? Um, you know, they have different teams using different vendors, different vendors play well in different use cases. So what we're all about is providing a single view and a single pane of glass that brings together your data across different vendors without having to consolidate them. And every vendor claims that consolidation is happening, which is actually the opposite of what we're seeing. And we're actually betting against consolidation, allowing our customers to, to choose vendors, you know, whatever best of breed vendor they want to use for a particular team or a particular use case. And, uh, you know, consolidating into a single pane of glass uh, is kind of like the oldest lie in IT. That's a big trend that we're seeing, right? Everyone promises it, but everyone that makes that promise, there's a huge caveat. And the caveat is if, you know, we'll, we'll provide a single pane of glass if you move all your data to our newfangled database. And we just think that that's, uh, that's not happening. So our Grafana Labs, we're all about kind of helping our customers amplify their existing IT investments and bringing their data together wherever it already lives without having to move it, you know, transform it, load it and consolidate it. Wow, that's a great summary. I appreciate that, Raj. Listen, our time's up. Thank you so much for joining me today and giving us this overview of Grafana Labs. If um, uh, a viewer or a reader here at eWeek uh, wants to find Grafana Labs, is it grafanalabs.com or grafana.com? What is it? Grafana.com with a with an F, not a PH. So G R A F A N A dot com. And you can thank our Swedish roots for that strange spelling. <laughs> okay, great. Raj Dutt, CEO of Grafana Labs. Thank you very much for joining us today on eSpeaks. Thanks, Chris. And for everybody following along to the end here, thank you so much and have a great rest of your e week. Thanks for joining us on eWeek eSpeaks. Go to eWeek.com to hear more conversations with IT thought leaders.